son was hailed by all of Vienna. Not only as a great pianist, but as one of the greatest and most controversial composers of his time. But I saw it first. I nurtured that talent in him. I had helped him become what he now was. On a stormy evening in February 1785, the elite of Vienna gathered to hear a new work from Austria's leading virtuoso pianist, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. The importance of what lay within this masterpiece was known to only one man, Leopold Mozart, the composer's estranged father. I believe Mozart is the greatest composer of all time. The popular view was that he was born a genius straight from his mother's womb. But in my opinion, his brilliance grew and developed from the loves and losses during his brief 35 years. Life was the driving force of his genius. In this series, I want to discover, helped by the true accounts of those who knew him firsthand and following in his footsteps, how Mozart's own suffering and joy created music so powerful that it captivates the listener today just as it did that first audience more than 200 years ago. Mozart was born into a musical family. His father, Leopold, was the author of a famous manual on violin playing and deputy director of music to the Archbishop of Salzburg. What do you think the outcome will be, Herr Schenk? I can assure you, Herr Mozart, the Archbishop is delighted with your composition. I heard him say so. And that his violinists will have to study them closely by Ascension Day. Leopold's family was small but close. Maria Anna, his wife, for whom he'd been disinherited for marrying beneath his station. His daughter, Nan Earl, herself an accomplished keyboard player. And little Wolfgang, four years younger and the apple of Leopold's eye. My little brother had a passion for knowledge. His tasks occupied him completely. For example, when he was doing sums, the table, chairs, walls, even the floor were covered in chalk figures. One day my father came home from work found Wolfgang busy scribbling away. He must have been about four at the time. Papa asked him what he was writing. A keyboard concerto, replied Wolfgang, and I've nearly finished the first part. Papa was, needless to say, very dubious as to this assertion, but he had a look at the manuscript. That evening when I asked him to play me something, I knew immediately that my life was now in servitude to something as rare, sounds poetic, I grant, as rare as when the moon blots out the sun. Let's hear the subject. God had given him to me in his great mercy. The answer. It was my duty from the moment he began to play to ensure that my son's sacred music brought joy to the world. From the beginning, his father was terrified by the boy's fragility. The boy was particularly disturbed by harsh, discordant, excessively loud sounds. So to make sure that this wonder, this miracle of nature, was not deterred by such sensitivity, Leopold asked me to sneak up on him unawares with my trumpet. 
when I blasted him from behind, Fourth Gang's face drained of blood, and to his father's shock, the boy quite fainted. Aware of his son's sensitive condition, Leopold's excitement remained undiminished. As a composer himself, he already recognized that the boy was writing something of real value. If Leopold could secure release from his duties in Salzburg, he would have the chance to transform his family's fortunes. It does not do to keep his grace waiting. <laughs> Finishing his scores. He is waiting. I have been working through the night and the night before. Leopold was desperate to share his son's talents with the wider world, but his duties to the Archbishop remained an obstacle. Yeah, Mozart! Ah, my scores! Wonderful! I understand you wish a leave of absence from your duties here in Salzburg. Oh, your Grace, my son Wolfgang has a gift, sacred in its singularity. It will be your discerning taste and perception that would be admired far beyond these city walls. Should myself and my family be given your blessing? It is not my name, but that of Salzburg that should most probably will benefit from your efforts. Godspeed. Your Grace, it's too generous. <laughs> too, too generous. It must have seemed like the most terrifying enterprise for Leopold on that day, the 9th of June, 1763. His whole family, these two gifted children, seven-year-old Wolfgang and his musically talented sister Nanel, leaving Salzburg and striding out into the unknown. The adventure is beginning! It was, I think, the make or break for Leopold, testimony perhaps to his great sense of self-belief. Take care of those instruments, some of them are very fragile. He had to provide for everything. Look after this for Wolfgang, he'd be very upset if Servants, horses, carriages. He engaged the services of a Mr. Winter to act as their hairdresser and valet. They needed clothes to impress and perhaps most expensive of all, a carriage and four horses. He was risking everything on the talent of his own small son. Wonderful feeling that morning. Escaping Salzburg had to be the best thing for my son. Only by his inhaling, or how can I put it, uh, the scent of a better class, feeling the adoration of thousand upon thousand, could his musical education take flight. It wasn't luxury, but then how cosseted were the ancient Greeks aboard their trireme. With our loyal servant, Mr. Sebastian Winter, at the helm to guide our voyage, this truly was our odyssey. Driving as I am across Central Europe, I can only marvel at the enormous distances that the Mozart family had to traverse. But that being said, Leopold had picked the perfect time for this great trip. The Seven Year War had just come to an end. It had been a particularly bloody conflict where all anyone could do was watch their back and look after their own. But now, with peace across much of Europe, the aristocracy in particular were able to enjoy themselves again and to throw money at entertainment. He's all of seven. How can a little mite of seven impress us? Come and sit on my lap, you little monkey. Come along. I shall stroke your hair. He's so 